Hi, everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Peter Llewellyn. Um, I run the services at medcomnetworking.com. So uh, information services, resources, activities for people who work across the globe in and around medical communications, medical education, medical publishing, and the associated businesses. Um, if you go to medcomsnetworking.com, you'll find lots of information, specifically the associated websites, look at Network Pharma TV, you'll find hundreds of videos on all sorts of manner of topics around medcoms. Um, and specifically, we do quite a lot in terms of trying to provide information for people who want to join medcoms, maybe as a medical writer or an account manager or whatever. There's lots of different roles in medcoms. Uh, you'll find lots of information at First Medcoms Job dot com careers guides articles videos careers events and so on and so forth uh, today's webinar is um is under that umbrella of, of sort of first medcoms job um, we're talking to people who want to come into the business and specifically uh, maybe the medics amongst you who want to join the industry um, absolutely delighted that we've got three um three of the team from amiculum um, i'm going to ask um, them to introduce themselves in a moment um, and then we're going to have just an open panel discussion talking about medcoms, uh, the role of medics, and, and particularly what I'm trying to get at is, you know, how useful, how, you know, what have you done with your medical degree? How has that worked in your favour within the role that you are in with med within medcoms? Uh, we have an audience today from across the world, which is great. Uh, I'd encourage the audience to chip in with their questions and observations, and we'll weave that into the conversation. So without further ado, Anna, I'm going to ask you, first of all, just to spend a couple of minutes just telling us who you are. Hi, my name is Sana Cerrato. I am a medical writer for Amiculum USA. I studied medicine in Spain. I'm, I'm Spanish. And I started working in medcoms straight out of med, call, uh, med school. So I didn't uh, actually work as, uh, as a practitioner beyond my, my internship. And uh, I'm... I live and work in Kentucky, although uh, this this job allows me for a lot of flexibility, so I move a lot around. Ooh, let's get off mute. Sorry, that's a classic. OK, so thanks, Anna. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go into a little bit more detail as to, how, as to how you come into Medcoms, what you're doing. So, But I just want for the moment to put, just get a, a handle on where you all are. So thank you very much for calling in from the States there. Um, Jenny, um, we went to you next. So we're going to go to you next. Just tell us again, where are you? Who are you? Hi, yes, I'm Jenny Thompson and um, I'm in the UK um, and I also work for Amiculum, uh, specifically uh, with Sequest, which is, you'll, you'll hear a bit more about the Amiculum setup, but uh, Sequest is one of the agencies uh, within Amiculum and uh, we specialise in gene and cell therapies. Um, and I actually was uh, working as a doctor for about 25 years before coming into medcoms and I've only been a medical writer for a year now so I'm happy to go into more details about how I got from one to the other in June. Excellent excellent okay thanks Hannah same question to you let's mm -hmm. just start by knowing who you are. Yeah okay uh, thanks Peter for hosting the webinar and asking us all to speak. Um, my name is Hannah Wills and I graduated from Edinburgh University in 2002 with my MBCHB and an intercalated BSc. Um, I completed my house jobs in the UK and then um, various SHO jobs in the UK, Australia and New Zealand, but then I switched to work as a medical writer. I've been in Medcoms now for 17 years and uh, currently I'm the editorial lead at 7.4, which is one of the amiculum agencies. Excellent. Okay, so span of experience there in medcoms and, and prior to, uh, which we'll go into a bit more detail in a moment. Um, Hannah, I'd just like you to set the scene to begin with, just by telling us a little bit more about Amiculum, because not everybody will know, know the organisation or how it's set up. So just paint the picture, talk to us about the organisation. So Amiculum is an independently owned healthcare consulting and communications business. It was set up just over 20 years ago in 2001, and we now have 11 agencies within Amiculum, um, including uh, 7.4, who I work for, and Sequest, who Jenny works for. Uh, we also have regional teams in the USA, Asia, and the Middle East. We are in total just over 350 people now. We have offices across the UK, so Oxford, where I work, uh, London, Manchester, Bollington, Glasgow and Dundee. Uh, we also have offices in 
uh, Dubai, Singapore, China, New Zealand, USA. So it's a global company. Um, just to give you an idea of how it works, each agency within Amiculum has a slightly different focus or uh, area of expertise. So um, as Jenny just mentioned, her agency Sequas uh, focuses on genetically informed healthcare. My agency 7.4 is it offers full service medcoms, but we have a special interest in creative design work and data visualization. Okay, and just sorry, and just following that, um, in the States, Amiculum USA, yeah, it's, 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 it's just titled that, isn't it? And, and you're a full service medcoms agency in the US, basically. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so the, okay. US, the cool. US team has, um, you know, in-depth knowledge of the, the local, the US market and the regulatory environment over there. So they can add that on top of uh, all the other services that Amiculum can offer. Okay, okay, cool. Okay. Okay, so look, what we're interested in is the personal journeys. Let's go into a bit more depth here. And I'm going, I'm going to start with you, Hannah, and go backwards at the moment. Yeah, so that was quite a little trip you did around the world to begin with. Yeah. Just give us a little bit more of a sense of the, the pre-medcoms life, as it were. Uh, so yes, as I said, I, I studied in Edinburgh. I did my uh, house jobs, as they were then, um, in Scotland. And then I did various standalone six month SHO posts, um, which I organized myself um, in various clinical specialties. My main interest and what I did most of was obstetrics and gynecology. That was my main interest. But I also did uh, six month posts in emergency medicine and gastro medicine. And yeah, I worked in the, US, uh, the UK, Australia and New Zealand. And it was a great opportunity to travel. And it was it was fab. And I actually really enjoyed all of my clinical jobs, uh, really, really did. I just couldn't settle on one specialty that I could see myself doing for the rest of my working life. And I also had this kind of nagging, nagging sense of missing real proper science. Um, oh. I'd had a little glimpse of it. Uh, during my intercalated BSc year, the chance to really drill down, focus on science, hone critical appraisal skills. I, I was able to write up a small research project. I really enjoyed all of that. So I was kind of thinking maybe I'll try something other than medicine. Um, I, I, I was acutely aware that in, in very much in contrast to all of my peers, I really got a good sense of satisfaction from writing up um, a really great discharge summary letter. Uh, <laughs> so I thought maybe writing, don't know. And then I just stumbled on a, a short-term job writing uh, clinical summary articles for GPs. I got the job and I absolutely loved it. And I was actually quite amazed that I could make a career out of learning and then writing about interesting things. So. I then did a little bit of digging into longer term, you know, related but longer term career options. And then I applied for a trainee medical writer role at a medcoms agency and just went from there. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm, correct me if I get any of this wrong, because it's hard for me to keep up. But you, you've been in medcoms about 17 years, I think it was, you said now. So mm -hmm. you've been quite a while and your experience in clinical medicine is quite a long time ago, basically. But mm -hmm. you said a number of things in there, which I find quite interesting in terms of why you would make the move that you made so let's just hold those thoughts uh jenny you're you're much newer into medcoms yes um yeah. just remind us how long you've been in because uh, and, and how long ago you were working clinical medicine yeah so um i uh qualified um yeah quite a long time ago now um so back in 94 um and then uh like hannah did various junior doctor jobs um i actually always knew that i wanted to go into genetics ultimately um and um so during my um medical training i did an intercalated bsc in genetics and so when I did my junior doctor jobs, I um, geared those around what would be useful uh, for genetics. So I did adult and pediatric medicine um, for about th uh, so three or four years working in hospitals and then went into my clinical genetics training. Um, and then during that time, I also did um, two years um, in research. Um, so working in a molecular lab. 
um, and that was great and I absolutely loved the research and like Hannah loved the science and it was probably out of all my jobs during my medical career that that was that was the absolute one for me um, I then carried on doing finishing my clinical training in clinical genetics um, as a registrar and then became an NHS hospital consultant and worked as a consultant for over 10 years and so that was sort of just um, before up to sort of before COVID um, and then sort of over a a, a while I'd been thinking that I wanted to to kind of have a change um it was more a change from working in the NHS rather than a change of working in genetics um but for this is going to sound a bit random but for a few different reasons um I decided to leave my job and I started a master's in diabetes so very different to rare genetic diseases going to a much more common one and um, I tried to uh, uh, get into uh, or look for jobs in diabetes after I'd finished my master's um, but I wasn't really because I didn't want to be a diabetologist I didn't want to go back into medical training to do that and um, but every time I researched uh, for jobs in diabetes up kept popping medical writer medical writer and I, I kind of parked that to one side because I didn't know what that was and then eventually I thought no I'm going to have to to look into this um so uh did quite a bit of research and in fact um uh ended up watching a, quite a few of your webinars I have to say right. um which were really really helpful and one of those webinars was um by Amiculum on their work in uh, rare genetic diseases and gene therapies and what they said completely resonated with the clinical work that I'd done and the genetics and I just thought oh this is this is it this is what I've been waiting to hear so actually I contacted the team straight after the webinar and that was a year ago and so here I am now so so yeah so okay well, I'm, I'm, I, again, it's just fascinating. I'd love, I love hearing these personal journeys and, and the sort of some of the thought process that goes on. And I think it's, it must be fascinating for other people just to be listening to you. Um, but just to, to, to flag the fact that, you know, you've got a background in genetics, you're interested in genetics, and you ended up in a specialist agency, which is using that specialist knowledge. And I'm just flagging that because that isn't always the way it works. And that's mm. not necessarily the way it should work. And, um, you know, a lot of people come in and um, I talk much more with PhDs, postdocs and medics. So they, you know, they've got a specialist interest in a very particular sort of, you know, something or other. Um, and the, the Medcoms agency doesn't take them on because of that specialist interest. Yeah. It takes them on because of all the transferable skills and all the rest of it. Yeah. So, you know, you don't tend to end up working in the area that you're working in. But it's just interesting listening to you and, and, and hearing the sort of the path where you followed, uh, albeit say, with a little bit yeah. of diversion to diabetes. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, but I still use that. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, but actually also to say that although I'm working in this agency that specializes in gene and cell therapies, we still do a lot of non-genetic, non-gene right. therapy stuff. So I'm um, doing, working in gene therapy areas sort of across the board really, which is really nice as well, because it's nice not just to focus on one thing. Um, so uh, which which again yeah. is one of the things people say about medcoms is there's quite yeah. a lot of variety sort of thing. Yeah, okay, definitely, okay, look, definitely, yeah. so, so some good stuff in there. Uh, as I, said, I really quite enjoy these stories. So, Anna, tell us a little bit more about your story, um, the sort of pre medcoms and into medcoms bit. Well, I started med school um, and I was like doing odd jobs, uh, trying to pay for med school. And, and I ended up working as a receptionist in a scientific book publisher randomly. But they had a need for some uh, medical translation translation at that point and they knew I was studying medicine so that was my first job as a freelancer and I honestly was hooked I think what Hannah said um, about feeling closer to the science learning new things every time being at the you know at like very very close to uh, discoveries and, and new research was very appe appealing to me and when I finished my internship, I decided that I didn't want to move into uh, a specialty and do a residency. And I kept working as a freelancer for seven years, um, traveling a lot, which is uh, something that is really nice about this kind of, of job. It allows you to uh, 
work remotely uh, a lot of the time. And eventually, a couple of years ago, I moved a little bit longer than that. Oh, man, it's been four years now. But anyways, I moved to the States and decided that I wanted to try my hand at the agency life. I worked in a, for a year in another agency and less four months ago, I moved into Amikulum and I'm really happy here now. Okay, okay, okay. So the point, the point partly of today's discussion is to specifically look at the fact that you've got medical degrees. Okay, so let's let's just put one thing out there, which is, is worth it, I think. Um, a lot of people look at medical writing med, med comms and assume that we're all medics, basically, because you have to be a medic in order to talk about medicine sort of thing. And that's a long way from the truth. Most people in medcoms aren't medics. Um, you know, a lot of them are very highly qualified scientists, maybe the MSc, PhD, postdocs, and all the rest of it. But you are a little unusual. I, I don't actually know how many medics there are in medcoms, but I don't meet that many of you. Um, and you know, one of the things that I think is worth saying is that there's lots of room for for more sort of thing, and hopefully more people will 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 sort of follow up after a, after a discussion like this. But what I'm interested in, who should we start with? Let's go with I don't know. I'm going to randomly jump around, Jenny. Um, what I'm interested in is what I'm trying, I'm trying to get, what really, I suppose you've touched on it already, but just go a little bit further. What appealed to you about medcoms? What did you sit there and think? Yeah, that's the direction I want to go in. Yeah, so I think, um, firstly, it's a science. Um, and I guess having gone into clinical genetics, that was a very kind of molecular heavy hospital specialty, I guess. And so it's, I absolutely love love the science and in medcoms it's just it's so interesting it's really varied and it's cutting edge um and i as i mentioned before my my research job that i did um was was you know back some time ago now was probably my favorite job in my kind of medical career so to speak um and and then also as well with medcoms you can still have that um, and still use your skills with um, healthcare professionals and patients, you still have that contact, you still still have that. So I love the fact that I can use the science, um, but also the, the uh, are still connecting with healthcare professionals and, and patients. Um, and the other thing for me was um, like Hannah and Anna really enjoyed um, the writing side and creating um pieces for presentations um and and the slightly kind of i guess for want of a better word the nerdy side of wanting things to look nice everything to be lined up um and and so it was all those things sort of together that that for me that's when i kind of the penny dropped and thought you know for me then i thought you know this is what i want to do and i want to try and um and something new to learn about as well I'm sort of i was up up for the challenge up for the change so that's sort of where i'm coming and from you're all, you're all you're all basically on the writing side i know mm -hmm. I'm using the terms loosely here, but you know, as opposed to maybe the client services side or whatever. Um, and you, you know, so so you're employed basically as writers and content developers and so on, rather than as medical advisors. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. So so, um, and I think that generally applies to the medics in the industry. Although there are there are there are some exceptions. But I suppose what you know what what is it that you think you bring? And I don't know, Anna. Let's start with you. You know, what is it you bring? that's a little bit different to other people. I mean, I suppose some of this is a bit obvious, but let's just spell it out. You know, what do you bring as a medical writer with your background that, that, that adds to the, the team that you've got around you? I think we understand, we have a very good understanding of what doctors need, what uh, medics need, what they look for in materials, how to uh, most effectively communicate the information that we want to transmit to them. I think as a, as a doctor, sometimes, um, again, as a medic, sorry, but um, sometimes you look at some materials and it's like, I don't know any specialist that has time to read this. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we need to restructure it in a way that, you know, catches your attention, tells you what you need to know, like top line. And then uh, if they want, they can look further into it. So 
because I've been there. I know what is useful for, for a doctor in the like the hospital. And then on the patient side, I feel I feel very I I think it's very fulfilling to be able to help patients understand what is going on in with with in their bodies when they get a, a diagnosis that sometimes can be like life shattering. They have this information that we can curate for them so they can understand a little bit better what is happening to them. And that's not something that you have in the hospital most of the time. You don't have enough time to do it. And I think that need transfers very well into medical writing. Uh, you, you bring that longing of helping them into medical writing, and it helps you, like I think, write more effective pieces for both um, you know, medics and, and patients. Okay, and, and I, I will. We have got a couple of questions coming in, and I would just encourage the audience here today to be sending us some questions and observations, and we can weave this into the conversation. And um, Hannah, you were nodding away there to what Anna was saying. I mean, blunt, bluntly, you've been in medcoms for seventeen years. It's a long time since you were doing clinical medicine, as it were. So, mm. again, just just talk to me a little bit about how you see your role. Um, you know, it, 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 how much of your role today? is is directly sort of you know i'm a medic therefore i know this as opposed to well, i was a medic but i've now you know become a medcom specialist you, you see what i'm getting at yeah um i think so so i would say that what was so i think initially things that i found useful and and i and i think this this is still valid is that during your medical degree you 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 know you learn a lot about a lot of stuff <laughs> so you don't go into the detail you know like somebody would, would if they were doing a phd a science phd you know you 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 are like a real expert in one particular area you're not an expert in anything i mean apart from jenny who went on and did all of her you yeah. know, postgraduate training but you do have a spattering of most things knowledge about most therapy areas so I think when you are when you join a new account or if you get involved in new business development or you're trying to you know pick up stuff for a, a therapy area for a pitch um I think it helps you to uh I think it helps you do that quite quickly I think you can get up to speed pretty quickly on a lot of different therapy areas and that has been helpful for me over the years um I think you, I think you still no, no matter how long really you've been out of medicine I think you still have a reasonable understanding of what it's like to work in different healthcare systems what it's like to be that busy to to be um to have so many different uh pulls on your time to be working in multidisciplinary teams to be working you know in a hospital or a clinic a primary care setting and then to work within a bigger system you know you kind of know how that what it feels like and 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 therefore um, it helps you to understand your audience. Um, I would also say, though, that I think that actually what a lot of HCPs, uh, the skills that they have, and they don't necessarily know they have, is they are generally really good at uh, communicating, staying calm under pressure, uh, juggling priorities, working to deadlines, uh, all of those kinds of soft skills. Um, yeah, working in a dis multidisciplinary disciplinary team, all of those things are so relevant to working in medcoms. Uh, and people don't always appreciate that they have those skills that they've they've really worked on over the years that they've been working as a healthcare professional. Which gets a little bit of what Amy was asking um, in terms of the advantages you're able to portray about yourself being from a medical background. I mean, it's all about transferable skills, isn't it? I yeah. think you covered that quite a number. That are quite so so when people are applying for jobs in medcoms or any job sort of thing think in terms of the transferable skills that you'll be able to bring to the party as it were um, and as a medic by definition you've got quite a lot i think medics but also you know i've worked with i've worked in medcoms with medics and so ex-medics ex-nurses physio pharmacists all sorts of healthcare right. professionals and i think it right. applies to everybody across the healthcare i see mm -hmm. what you mean yeah 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 um Okay, let's 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 and and I'm going to throw it back at you, Hannah, because mm -hmm. you're probably in the position where you're looking at this sort of thing. Um, Isabella's saying, does a medical degree offer an advantage for medical writing jobs applications? So, if you're if you're if you're recruiting medical writers, does a medic somehow automatically just pop out and go, well, they're particularly interesting? 
is it like that or is it not like that? Um, that I mean? It's yeah, it's um, it's not. It, we would take an application. So I'm involved in recruitment, uh, yeah. particularly medical writer recruitment for 7.4 and, uh, you know, within a maculum. Um, and yes, it might kind of catch my eye because we've got a common background, but um, we take everybody's application you know, as it as it comes, and you are judged under exactly the same terms as everybody else, regardless of background. So yes, you have all those transferable skills, and I would absolutely make sure that you pull those out in your application. But you know, you will go through exactly the same process as everybody else. Um, you know, people who have come from all kinds of different backgrounds. You know, a lot of our applications come from. Um, people who've been in academia before, uh, either straight out of you know, an undergraduate degree, a master's or a PhD. And everybody brings different and, things. Yeah, so the, I think that's an important point to make, isn't it? And 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 in different conversations, different sorts of people will raise, you know, do I get uh, some sort of fast track because I'm a postdoc with, with 30 publications behind me or something? Like no, basically. Um, so everyone's got their own strengths and weaknesses. They've all got to sell themselves. And, and as a rule, nothing's absolute as a rule people coming into this business will start at the beginning you came in at, you know whether you're a medic or whether you're a postdoc with x years or you know you're going to come in essentially as a trainee medical writer is that a fair fair thing to say yes i think so um at, uh, you know in my experience everybody who switches from whatever they're doing for moves into medcom comes in a, in an entry level role because there is so much to learn Exactly, exactly. Um, and I, yeah. I, I mean, nothing's absolute. There are exceptions, but I think it's an important message to get out there. People should sort of, it's a specialist business. You have to learn the business. Having said that, one thing I always say to people is you, your progress through, um, you know, through the ranks, as it were, can be very quick. You know, if you've got the experience, the, the, the transfers, all the rest of it, you know, pick it up and run with it and you can you can move quite quickly. This isn't a sort of situation where you come in at a level and wait for the person above you to die before you step up a level sort of thing, yeah? Um, it's very much more down to you and your ability and your and, and, and the effort you put in sort of thing. Yeah, and I think also that's quite different to, um, you know, like life as a medic or, you know, a nurse or a physio. Um, your progression is, a lot of it is to do with time served, um, whereas that's not the case in medcoms it's exactly. very much based on your contribution the responsibility that you're taking it's based on your progress and yet yeah, like you just said talented people can progress really quickly in medcoms yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, jen i'm going to bring you in let's just, just just touch on this briefly but you've come in reasonably uh relatively um, recently what was the process um interview medical writing tests yeah. and so on i guess yeah. just just yeah. talk us through quickly that sort of process yeah, so I started with, um, well, it was billed as an informal chat, but it felt like an interview, really. Um, and then after that, I had um, a writing test. Um, so, um, and that took a couple of weeks. And then I had another interview after that as well. Um, can I interrupt? What, can you just give me a sense of what the writing test was? Yes. I know they all so, vary, but just give me yeah, a sense of what you did. Uh, so I was sent um, a published a publication um, and I was asked to use that to devise, um, I think it was 10 slides of a PowerPoint presentation. Um, it was actually to be a training module um, for um, a client to be used internally to uh, train, um, I think it was a, um, medical service liaison groups, I think. Um, and uh, so that was the audience and it had to be done so that it was going to be read by them as a presentation rather than a spoken presentation. Okay. Uh, so but but the, the output as it were was what, a set of PowerPoint slides? A ten, yeah, I think 10 slides. It was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And so, so interview as it were, um, writing test, another interview. Yeah. And into the job sort of thing. I, again, I'm not trying to be clever here. Well, one of the, again, one of the points I, I try to make to people actually is the process is relatively straightforward to get into medcoms. It's very competitive, and there's lots of people trying to get in, and it can feel quite difficult. But the process is relatively straightforward. You're not usually faced by um, an employer that's going to give you tricks and, t and 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 tricky tests and and play games with you like we no. sometimes hear about in other industries. Yeah. This one's relatively straightforward. Yeah, it was very but certainly if you go into medic, yeah. sorry, go on. It, yeah, no, it's very transparent. And when I was sent the um, 
the writing test, it was okay to ask questions and to cl clarify exactly what was wanted. And right. I think that I would say that definitely ask those questions if you're not sure um, um, before you start or as exactly. you're doing it. And don't worry exactly. about asking. Don't worry about asking because in the job, that's what you would do if you were given a brief for a project. You don't understand it. You ask a question. So, yeah. yeah. Ask Again, that's I, I, I can go with that. I mean, and, and I and I sort of emphasize when I say that to somebody that what I don't mean is that agencies are testing you by not giving you the information to see if you'll come back to them. Mm. It's just not the way the game's played. But there's nothing wrong in going back and saying, I'm not quite sure about this, am I understand it correctly? And as you say, basically, that's what you're going to do when you get into the job anyway. Yeah. Um, Amy's just asking, do all agencies set writing tests? Um, basically, it's very unlikely you'll get a medical writing job without a medical writing test. Um, there are other roles where there are maybe some different sorts of tests and so on. Um, uh, but the medical writing job, you'll get a medical writing test. But the sort of test you get will vary quite a lot. Um, um, and I, just the same. Oh, sorry, go on. Sorry. Yeah, go on. I, no, sorry no, go to interrupt. On. I was just going to say that actually um, the assessment of your writing starts with your cover letter and your CV rather than the test. So don't forget that. Um, yeah. Uh, really important, and I was gonna, I was going to draw that out to be honest. And there's there's the whole thing that we always talk about attention to detail throughout the whole process. Don't underestimate the importance. And I always also laugh slightly and talk flippantly about the fact that you know I, I deal with people in medcoms, and if you saw some of the emails that I get, you think well, there's no attention to detail whatsoever. But when you're coming into the job, that's what they're looking for. And if you write to me and go, dear Fred, I'm interested in a job with you doing this, I'm going to go well, you know. You just got it wrong from the start, you know, and you and you throw the throw the CD straight out very very quickly. But you know, grammatical stuff, typos, you know, uh, you know, the whole thing from the email that you send in, the covering letter, the CV, it's all got to sort of match up. Yeah, um, it's really important that people understand that because that's what this business is about. In the end, is is attention to detail and accuracy and those sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I was just not. Oh, go on, Hannah. You well done. I, I, wanna, I just want to add a bit more out of information out of Hannah. Uh, in fact, just go, one go more. Hannah, go on. Um, <laughs> I I would just say because for the people on the line um, that in I, I keep your CV short because um, like personally one page but I'd say two pages maximum um, in medicine it's in many countries anyway it's quite expected that you provide a very long CV with you know quite an exhaustive list of 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 publications and jobs um, exactly yeah. it, that isn't that isn't the case in other industries and particularly in ours where one of the main skills is 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 creating concise content and writing to your audience being able to pull out you know the key points that you want people to really read um uh, and and yeah like i said that that starts with your cover letter and your cv exactly okay okay um someone anonymous has just said is the cv read by humans um in an agency like a mechanism i'm imagining you look at it properly yeah mm -hmm. it's a simple answer to that okay okay um just a hey, anna, anna i'm going to bring you in i'm i'm, I'm i should emphasize anna as opposed to hannah because we're getting confused with but anna <laughs> i was going to bring you in let's get you talking a little bit there's a couple of questions in um amy for instance um is asking skills or tasks that medical medical hcp applicants struggle with when first starting out in medical writing and, and someone else has asked, um, how can we improve our writing skills in order to uh, move into medcom? So just talk around that a little bit, Anna. Can you remember? Um, uh, can, can, you, can, you, can you please repeat the first question? Oh, is, is, yeah, what, what, what might you have struggled with? I, I guess the specific question in terms of medical HCP type applicants, what, sort of, what, what, what are the struggles you might face as you come into medcoms, do you think? Communication. Uh, Medcoms is about communication. And I think as doctors, we are sometimes trained to work on our own very independently and not ask questions or not try to bounce ideas off of other people. I think learning that is a very, very important skill to have in medcoms. It's perfectly fine to go and ask, uh, you know, the person that is above you in the line or just a, a co writer, a, a co-worker, uh, you know, I'm, I'm having issues with this, uh, with this thing that I want to write. Do you mind if I bounce a few ideas of you? And that's something that it's, it's part of the beauty of, of the job. And I think uh, personally, I was not trained to work like that in, um, in med school. 
uh, sometimes we may get very attached to what we think is important as clinically important. And we have to shift the perspective and understand what is important for our client, whether if it's whether it's a, like a pharma, pharmaceutical company or uh, organization, they their objectives may be different than what we think is the most important thing as, as doctors. And we have to be very mindful of that. We are not clinicians and we have to shift our perspective a little bit. That was about like the first question. And the second one, uh, I am uh, not a, nav a native English speaker. Uh, just uh, I started uh, writing in Spanish actually and, and working as a translator. Just read, read as much as you can, rewrite what you read and <clears throat> make sure to stay updated in all the guidelines. AMA is a, a good place to start. I membership, AMA membership, I, I found very useful, but you have to use it. Uh, at the end is the effort you put into it is what is gonna give back to you. There's no tricks that work for everyone, but definitely try everything you can. <laughs> Okay, okay. And I'm going to ask a provocative question, and I'd, I'd be interested whether you've all got an opinion on this. Um, and if Sophie's sort of touching on it in her question. Um, as medics, you know, uh, leaving medicine and going into industry, um, any sort of conflicts either for yourself or for the people around you? Anybody sort of go, ooh, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay. Um, just... And I'm going to ask each of you, Anna, start with Anna. How, how do you feel that that transition went? Okay. Uh, my parents still ask me, when are you going to work as a doctor? <laughs> I said, <laughs> up to this date, almost 10 years after I started this, uh, in this path, my, my parents are still expecting me to go back to the hospital. Like they think this is something that I decided to do for a while, but I will eventually be in a hospital. Um most people don't really know what medcoms is about. Like it's it's exploding now, but uh, whenever I tell people, yeah, I'm a medical writer, it's like, uh, so what what do you do? Do you, you write, write books about medicine? It's like, no, that's not what I do. I'm I kind of a I'm a technical writer, um, and there's always this group of people that for some reason believe that doctors must have some kind of like a uh, very elevated goal to just solve humankind problems and they think that it's not a good choice to not work with patients um i i am very happy with my decisions i i think that as people and professionals we do have to prioritize our our well-being and for me this this is my path. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Jenny, have you, have you, did you, you get any kickback? I mean, do you, do you shy away from the yeah. fact that you're basically working with the pharmaceutical industry? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, um, no, I think, I think because partly I had a gap from working in the NHS, I had a two or three year gap before then starting in medcoms. Um, so it wasn't straight from NHS public sector into the private sector. Um, and, and yeah, I guess I I did have you know, I guess you you quest you know you question yourself is this really the right thing? Um, I think because there are so many challenges working in somewhere like the NHS at the moment that actually um, moving into the private sector to be honest has been quite a revelation um, and uh, really really enjoying it um, and there's lots of great things about it and I've learned so much in the last year I mean it has been really interesting um, so. I guess my medical career that I, you know, I changed, left that in 2019. So that is really, you know, it's feeling like it's quite a while ago now. Um, I will also just go back if it's okay to the previous question about um, improving writing skills. Um, I did yeah. a couple of things. Um, so um, before I applied um, for a job, I worked, I, I did use my my diabetes in the end and I worked for a charity, um, voluntarily diabetes uk um and i worked i asked if i could work in their research comms 
department and so um, I did some work with them writing lay summaries on research that they were funding them and those summaries were then going to be put onto the website and that was really good because they gave me some training as part of that so that was a really um, useful way of improving my skills. Um, I also did um, a work experience scheme for three months with uh, aspiration um which i learned about again on one of your webinars right, um, okay. and that was that allowed me to delve into the world of medcoms and get a bit of a flavor so that that again was a really useful thing and then i also did a couple of um moocs these um massive online courses um yeah. on science communications and that that was um they were quite good and just gave a bit more info about you know targeting um how how to know what the motivations of your audience are your presentation skills and various things so i did i did those sort of things to try and improve my cv really and improve my experience but also to really see is this what i wanted to do so those things helped cement for me you know this is what i now want to do by doing that experience so okay. i just thought i'd add that that in there because yeah yeah no thank you very much thank you mm -hmm. But, but Hannah, I'd still I'd, I'd like to finish with you. Uh, we're going to wrap up in a minute or two. We'll have to. But um, I'd, I'd just be interested in that in the answer to that question as well from your point of view. Any conflict in terms of moving from clinical medicine to an industry type position? Um, I think I was aware of it when I first switched, and I was maybe a little bit wary, maybe. Um, but you know, as soon as I sort of settled in and, and and got to grips with how things work so I was quite reassured that there's so many rules and there's so much compliance around what you can do and how you know pharma can work and um I was quite surprised by how strict it was as an environment to work in and and actually that's quite reassuring when you're coming from um right. clinical medicine where pharma is sometimes seen as you know well, maybe not somewhere you want to go and work well, exactly. So, I mean, I mean, we might as well face up to it. I mean, those are the sorts of questions that people must be asking themselves when they're looking at these sorts of roles. Just uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's asked a question, and I just like Hannah. I'm going to ask you to finish on this one. Um, mm. But um, tomorrow's saying, you know, what uh, what can you recommend to help stand out? Right? You know, how do you build a portfolio? Are blogs and social media valuable pieces of writing? So, you, you, as you said, you're involved in recruiting writers. Just have you got a couple of tips and and, and a comment on tomorrow's question there in terms of what might help them stand out? And, and specifically, uh, is a blog site a useful bit of writing to show that they can write sort of thing? Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we are recruiting for, uh, if you're applying for an entry level uh, writer role, then it's absolutely a training role. We do not expect any previous experience um, along those lines. We don't expect internships or anything. We will train you. But to stand out, I think it's, like I said before, you know, just really submit a great, great cover letter and a CV, a really good test. Um, that's what it's about. Um, if you have some experience of writing before, then it can help you to your application to stand out. And that can be anything. It can be contributing to some kind of student magazine or creating some sort of patient information leaflet or writing a blog it doesn't matter what it is um it just shows that you've got an interest and and you've you've been trying to get some experience of doing that in different ways before that does help you to stand out but it's not needed okay i think that's a really important point in there you're not you're not and, and people get confused about this you know so i haven't got any medical writing experience how do i get a job as a medical writer well you know you apply for an entry-level job and they train you that's the important starting point the, the point i always say about the social media stuff is um you know you can write about whatever you like rock climbing or whatever it is you do that's not a problem it can be good sensible communication demonstration of, of ability to communicate right and so on. what you want to be a little bit careful of is the um is this the blog that you wrote the morning after the university party the night before and and you thought it was very funny at the time but you know remember your social media your it, online footprint is out there and you guys will be having a look at that sort of thing so it's just always worth having a think about that from that point of view as well um 
I think we probably, there's a couple of questions coming in, but I'm, and I'm gonna, I, those of you in the audience, we're here for another 10 minutes or so, so we'll carry on and we'll pick up some of those uh, those questions specifically. Um, but I think we covered a lot of ground there. I think for the purposes of today, I'm gonna wrap up, but um, I, I'd make a very clear point here that you know anybody watching this, uh, members of the audience or watching the video later, please you know make, um, make contact with you guys via LinkedIn. You're very happy to hear from everybody, yeah? Um, so please, LinkedIn is the easy way of doing that, yeah? Okay, so I'm going to say a huge thank you to you, huge thanks to the audience, and say to the audience, don't don't rush off. We've got a few minutes le uh, left. Um, but thank you very much for coming on board. Um, and can we all just give, uh, if anyone's interested in what I'm doing, medcomsnetworking.com. Come and look at firstmedcomsjob.com if you're interested in working in, in the industry and so on. We're all very happy to talk uh, to anybody who's interested. So on that note, I'm going to ask everyone to give us a little wave and I'm going to stop recording. Bye-bye.